Uh, I just went straight black with my Vietnamese coffee. I've never done this before, so this might kill me. I don't know. Ching Fu Tong Rose with a Ching Chu Hong Rose with a Ching Chu Hong Rose. Yeah, it's crazy. I know all about anime, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, they my people. We took a quick trip back to LA, and of course we had to eat at all the new restaurants that opened up in our favorite Asian food haven, the 626. There's a brand new food hall started by Asian Americans, there's a new miniature Chinese skewer spot, there's robot made Vietnamese food, and there's also a restaurant that feels like a Chick-fil-A had a baby with a dim sum restaurant. Only in the 626. Hit that like button and let's go. Our next new concept in the 626 is the Blossom Market Hall. This is a brand new food hall in the Mission District of San Gabriel. The Blossom Food Market was inspired by the 626 Night Market. Basically, you know, put here to have food hall, food market, 365 days out of the year. So like, there's always gonna be like new stuff here, but you know, it's not just Asian. They got Jamaican, they got Mexican. And you know there's a lot of foodies in the 626 because food halls are really only in metropolitan like areas with lots of people and you know, a lot of that culture. People out here love food. Let's go eat some food. All right, you guys, we're in front of AK Fresh Roast Coffee. This is almost like taking Vietnamese coffee to like a more in innovative level. I'm from Vietnam, you know, we're more like the Southeast Asia people, you know, that we're from there. So I know Panda is very popular. So allow me to do the pandan. I'm a huge coffee drinker. I love coffee. She told me to drink the bottom first and then sip the top and then we'll mix the two. Oh yeah. All right, time to mix it up. Pandan coffee. There's actually a spot in New York that just opened called La Fin, and it is a Vietnamese coffee shop that also put Pandan in their drink. I had a hot version here, I have a cold version here. I like both. Did you, did you ever think you would see the Viet coffee mixed with strawberry like that though? Never, never. Yeah, you have to go up and down, bro. Drink it up and down. It tastes like strawberry ice cream. Oh, I never thought there'd be jerk chicken in San Gabriel. So I'm from Guyana, oh. which is a, from part of the West Indies. Right, right. Awesome. What do you yeah. guys think you do best? Um, oxtail stew. Okay. It's the biggest seller and the patties, the beef patties. You guys, we are going to be checking out the first Caribbean, Caribbean, West Indian, Jamaican food you could find in the 626. Oh my. To your God. knowledge, Nell, have you ever seen Caribbean food in 626. Not in the 626. Only time I ever had it was in New York with you guys, Yo, man. This right. looks real deal. Thank you everybody for clicking on that video. And I want to give a shout out to today's sponsor, New Mobility. It's a very, very popular e-mobility brand that's popular around the world, but now it's actually entering the American market. They make some of the dopest moped style fully electric scooters. They even have e-bikes and kick standing scooters. So they have multiple levels of the moped style electric scooter. The top one is the N class, NQI. And then the second one you would have is the M. And the smallest model of the electric moped line that they have is the UQI. And their security measures are pretty dope too. Yo, is someone stealing it? Check to see if you have a new store in the city near you. Oh this my goodness, beef. Hey, that's, that's beef. This is a lot bigger than Golden Crust, guys. Wow. Nelson, I don't think you've ever had a beef patty, right? No, Jamaican beef so. patty? No, I have right. not. Hey, Nell's first time having a Jamaican beef patty. Dave's going in on the oxtail, Nell going in on the Jamaican beef patty. That is some of the best Caribbean oxtail I ever had. Not that I'm an expert on it, but this is good. I really like how soft the shell is on the beef patty. I think the meat is a little excessive. There's a lot, but it does taste very flavorful. Mmm. <laughs> Super tender. Off screen, off screen. Honestly, I think this is the best oxtail you can get anywhere near the 626 right now. Hey man, I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I have not been eating a lot of Caribbean food growing up and I'm just really surprised that, you know, they brought it here to the 6. This is the best entryway for people to try Caribbean food in the 626. Check it out. I feel like here, I heard they have like some lychee cocktail beers. I think like, so we wanted to bring something like this here because we don't have a lot of places like this. Like, and it's like the vibe here, you know, we're doing like the local beers. All of our wines are going to be small production, so you can't find it in like Ralph's, Trader Joe's or anything like that. All right, this is going to be the lychee blossom. It has lychee juice. Uh, it also has Japanese sake and some uh, more like lychee flavoring. This is the Sandgate Spritz. This is going to be our yuzu cocktail uh, made with some yuzu sake. It's like high quality, really clean and smooth. And this is going to be the sake sunrise. 
guys. So this is ma actually made with a sake that's infused with tequila. So it's gonna kind of be a play on a tequila sunrise uh, with passion fruit. All right, our next new concept of the 626 is called Bun Bun Bao Dim Sum Express. You know, everybody in the 626 is always trying to figure out a way how to bring the 626 flavors up to Pasadena. We're up here on Colorado Boulevard. Now, what are you seeing right here? What are they doing with burgers and sandwiches? Man, so they're making the burgers out from the manto, you know, right. manto bread. And this they is got the white flour bun. All right, this is the beef bao bao. I've never had it with the steamed white bun. Let's see what it's all about. All right, here I got the chicken bao bao. Got a little spicy sauce, chicken tenders in the middle. Steamed bun was executed really well. It's really soft. Um, Taste-wise, it's a little bland. I think they could add more sauce, but the beef patty was good. The pickles was actually really good. As far as having the manto buns as the bun of a burger, I think more people should try it because it's really fluffy um, if you get the right one. So I, I think it's a stay for now. I think it's a stay. I think you just need to add a little bit more flavor to give you more of a kick. All right, so this is a fried pork bow. I'm about to break this open. Ooh, feel that crust. Are you guys surprised that people didn't fry like hum baos or chashu baos earlier? I think people should have been fried. You know, I had a fried shaolong bao a long time ago in Shanghai once. It was delicious. I don't know why people don't more. It, it, do it's more. weird because they fried the mantos, but they don't fry the you know chashu baos. But here I have a steamed pizza bao. Mmm. Mmm. I just really like how soft and fluffy it is. It's very easy to eat. Does it taste like a hot pocket at all? I think better, man. I think one thing more people should do is fry the bao. The outside is crispy, the inside still fluffy. This is a salted egg yolk one, of course. Oh my gosh. Let's oh, get that's it. A fried bao. Decadent, bro. <laughs> it's a decadent. All right, here I'm going in on the, you know, the baked chicken breast rice. The other variation is the white cream sauce. And I personally like the white cream sauce. My honest opinion on Bun Bun Bao is that the product is actually pretty good, but I think a lot of people are gonna be turned off by the oddness of the menu and the mixture of like Cantonese dim sum and burgers and, and baos and stuff. But honestly, if you try it, the fried baos and the chicken sandwich are very solid right across from Chick-fil-A. So you got options. Chick-fil-A is your not so interesting option. And this one is your interesting option. All right, our next spot on our 626 crawl is actually this spot called Teho. And they started in the OC, you know, in the Vietnamese community, but now they moved up here, I think with a new owner and a new look, and they're just serving bung kun. But they focus on pork ingredients rather than, you know, the Cantonese or Chinese style where they have a bunch of different ingredients. Still really good. Guys, this is all they do. It's just the bung kun. Let's check it out. All right, everybody, we just got our food. Teho is doing stuff differently than any other Vietnamese restaurant I've ever seen. They put stuff in these nice boxes. Look at this branding, okay? They give you this bag, even though I'm eating here. Uh, I just went straight black with my Vietnamese coffee. I've never done this before, so this might kill me. I don't know. Man, they're really making it like a fast food spot. Very interesting. Ooh! Okay, take a look at the garlic noodles with the uh, beef cubes, of course. That's the classic, you know, filet mignon dish. This actually came out of a machine. That was like a circular drum. And now I've seen that technology a lot. It's supposed to replace like the wok and stir frying. So I don't know, I'm gonna taste it. I'm gonna see how it is. And then this is their classic house special bum coon. Okay, you got the little fried shrimp and like taro cakes. The yeah, the potato cakes with fried shrimp in it. That looks good. You have your greens, your sprouts, obviously your fried onions, bung coon, and then your sha lua, cha lua. I, I don't know how to say it, but it's, you know, it's the sausage. Wow, wow. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a slice of this. This is, this is all going in. Nice little dunk in the... I like it how it overflow and it caught all the nook, no, nook mom so I'm not wasting it. Traditional Vietnamese food, done in a fast food way, man. This is crazy. I really think it's cool how it started in the OC and OC having like the main Vietnamese population in, you know, SoCal, it makes sense. And then now it also makes sense for it to expand and go to other places like 626, where obviously there is a lot of Vietnamese and Chinese Vietnamese people and people just like Vietnamese food out here in general. Right off the bat, mm. the noodles have a super, super high garlic taste to it, which is really good, very savory. The beef cubes, you know, not super chewy, very tender. Very, very tasty. You know, you got your veggies, you know, make it seem kind of healthier, but hey, this garlic noodle with the onions, super good. So while this isn't the first time that I've seen a kind of a fast food version of Vietnamese food, this is the most modern presentation. Something where you're putting it in a box, you kind of mean it to uh, 
be for like the office crowd where like you would want a corporation to have like an, an office lunch and have order like 30 boxes of Tejo, you know? I would definitely come back and I think it's a great spot for lunch. I told you I'm not scared. This is straight black Vietnamese coffee, no condensed milk. Here you got the lychee yogurt. Yogurt is very, very popular nowadays. Let me start with this. Ooh, that was pretty good. Straight black. Woohoo! Straight black to the domey. All right, you guys, our next new 626 concept is Chao Wei Chu. Now, this is actually a Tao Zhou restaurant. Now, I know that you have had some Chiu Jiao food before in the 626. Oh yeah, growing up, I had a lot of Chiu Jiao food, but it was mixed with the Vietnamese version, or also, you know, a Chiu Jiao mixed with Cambodian version, but I heard this is the pure Chiu Jiao food, like from Chao Zhou. Yeah, this is actually from the Tao Zhou region of Guangdong. Pop it up on a map, guys. There are so many Chiu Jiao people in 626, whether they're from Tao Zhou, from the diaspora, let's check it out. All right, you guys, we're at Chao Wei Ju. Gotta keep it quiet in here. Um, Nell, what do you see that kind of reminds you of the Chiu Zhao Vietnamese food you've had? And then what kind of just looks unique? Oh, uh, definitely, you know, the noodle soups, you know, very common. This spot has less of that satayness, you know, from the Viet aspect of it. This is the four fresh cut beef Tao Zhou noodle with the uh, ho fun. Mm -hmm. This is a very clear beefy broth. It's almost like something you made at home, but like with more cuts of beef than you normally would put in. Um, like we said, guys, this is a really popular style in Shenzhen from Shanto. Mm -hmm. I think uh, the reason why it's very clean is that you can, you know, complement it with any of these sauces. Right, right, right. Let's dip it in a little bit of these, uh, in the, some of these saute sauces. Now, what you going for? This is the garlic, this is the sacha, and this is the chili. So, you know, we're gonna have to go with the OG sacha sauce. Oh, the sauces here are crazy, bro. Hold up, hold up. You got some of these sacha sauces? Five out of five. All right, you guys, we are looking at the Chao fish cakes. And a Chao beef rib. I noticed that I haven't seen that beef rib at the Chiu Jiao Viet spots, but I've uh, seen these fried one times. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Damn, super tender, packs hella flavor. Right, you can see the oil just dripping on it, man. What type of flavor? Very savory. Huh? The rib is good, man. As far as I know, this is like, one of the only ways in southern China to eat this because you have to go up to like inner Mongolia to get the other type of, you know, barbaric eating. All right, last but not least now, we got the oyster pancake. Now, there's actually some debate whether Chiu Jiao people uh, came up with this or it was like a uh, Hokkien, like shaman, Fujian thing, but they are right next to each other. So, you guys, some of these things, they are to history. Chao Zhou omelet. omelet. Little dip. Woo! Uh, oyster pancake. I think the biggest difference I noticed between the Chiu Jiao Southeast Asian food and the Chiu Jiao Chiu Jiao food is the saute is on the side versus the saute being cooked into the broth. I guess, you know, there's no right or wrong answer. I think it has the best of both worlds. I think the more Canto, you know, Chinese people will probably come to this spot more, whereas the Southeast Asian Cantos will probably go to the Chiu Jiao, you know, slash Viet, slash Cambodian style. Yeah, it goes to show you the diversity of sort of just being Chinese. Because when you want something cleaner, you got to get the Chao Zhou food. But yeah. then you want you want you want something to just, just go pop 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 like it, you gotta get the you gotta get the southeast Asian man yeah, the flavors be crazy. Nelson, where we at? We are at the famous Shin Fu Tang in San Gabriel, but there is an anime pop up event today for Jujutsu Kaisen, you know JJK. I know all about anime, you know what I'm saying? Are oh, these your people? Yeah, they my people. Something missing archives, but it is a sneaker consignment store inside of Shin Fu Tang, which is pretty interesting. You know, you got both and sneakers all in one place. Let's check it out. What are the advantages and disadvantages of having a sneaker store right inside Shin Fu Tong? Right inside? Well, the advantage is that people, it's like, it's unexpected, right? It's like an added experience. The disadvantage is like, because they're not expecting it, they, they don't really, you know what I mean? Like, they're not here to like purchase, they're just here to kind of like look. So the, the usual like um, demographic for Boba, you know what I mean? It's like the cool kids. Right? Um, and then, you know, like even with the anime thing happening right now, it's just like a huge like merge of like culture, so. Alright you guys, real quick, we had to try Teddy's Tacos. They're sort of like a second generation Mexican-American spot, but they actually have a Tacos Chino, which is their Asian-inspired taco right here. And they told me actually uh, their Sriracha and then Asian Slaw, which is the sort of pickled Asian fusion, like Korean purple cabbage that uh, Kogi made famous. So, you guys, Full circle. Kogi taco was like, you know, a Korean chef cooking Mexican tacos. Here's a Mexican cooking Asian inspired tacos. Yo, that's pretty good, guys. There's absolutely some gochujang sriracha vibes. I actually think that this uh, tacos chino 
with the cheese baked in, so it's almost like a queso taco, definitely has legs. Because um, if you look at, for example, the Kogi taco is a little bit more on the Asian side. This is a little bit more on the Latino Mexican side, but both are a fusion and a fusion done well. All right, you guys, we are at Ipo Malaysian Kapitiam. Uh, they are from Ipo, Malaysia, which is nearby Penang. Uh, the way they cook their soft boiled eggs for the Kayatos here is pretty interesting. They drip this uh, hot water into another chamber, and once the water disappears uh, like a cafe suda press, then the egg is ready. Um, this is Kaya Toast right here. Let's bust it open. Oh, That's wow. Kaya Jam. Big old piece of ow yow slab butter, butter right here. Ah, just get it. Get it. Oh, man. Toast, pop. Ah. Wow. Nice. I didn't actually did not expect ah. it to look like that. Ah. <laughs> Get a little white pepper. Pop, pop, pop. Oh! Mix it up, mix it up. Yeah, it's crazy. Alright, you guys, we do an authentic Kaya toast in the 626. Malaysian Kaya toast. toast. Straight from Epo. That's good. I, I've never, ever, 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 ever had anything like this before. That's the best Kaya toast I've ever had in America, ever. The jam, the butter is very heavy in this because you know how yeah. big that butter was. But hey, man, I've never had anything like this before. Honestly, it kills the Kaya Toast I've had in New York. Guys, I'm a big fan of Kaya Toast. I'm not even gonna dip it, I just lather it on there, baby. Yeah, 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 psych, psych, I do dip it. it might be a little too much butter. The butter is crazy. All right, you guys, the food here at Ipo is incredibly authentic. You have a Singaporean style Hainan chicken, Hoi Lam Gai Fan. Over here, you've got Bakate, this is a chu kwat. Pai kwat? Yeah, pai kwat medicinal tong with the goji berries, mushrooms, all types of spices and things in your life is. <laughs> and wonton mean. No. Kale wonton mean. Oh, yeah, yeah. David, have you ever seen authentic bakate in the States? Have we had I have it? never seen authentic bakate in America. All right, now the Singaporean style Hainan chicken does not typically come with bones. Unlike the Malaysian style, they tend to eat more roast chicken in Malaysia as well. All right, here we go. Ipo Hainan chicken. Right off the bat, I totally taste the quality of the chicken. It's yeah. a lot more chewier than, you know, like the, let's just say, the other fusion Hainanese, you know, chicken. But I like it, man. Very authentic. Three, two, one. Oh my goodness, here we go, bakate. Last time we had bakate, we were in Kuala Lumpur. Yeah, bakate. bakate. This is bakate from Ipo. Very herby soup. Very herby like flavors. It's medicinal, but that's authentic. Honestly, I didn't know what to think, but once you take the bakate and you dip it in this sauce now. Let me see, let me see. Five out of five. Five out of five, that's a heavy statement. Let's see. <laughs> Last but not least, we have the wonton mee, which is a uh, wonton mee, but it's kale kai. So, uh, curry wonton mee. So, this is supposed to be together. The noodles have a ton of soy sauce, Malaysian style, sesame oil. Um, let's just try it. All right, wonton. All right, you guys, wrapping up our meal here at Ipo. I've got a uh, warm Milo, and you've got a uh, thousand plus. This is a Malaysia only drink. A thousand or a hundred? A hundred. Oh, then you, you go in a thousand. Yeah. Honestly, I think this is one of the most authentic Malaysian uh, Chinese restaurants I've ever been to in my entire life. Uh, I'm glad it's here in the 626. I think the 626 was being shortchanged by not having enough good Singaporean and Malaysian food. And Ipo changes that. I lived here for a very long time. And this is by far the best Malaysian spot. Well, I win. Here. Hey. That's, that's the boss, that's the boss. <laughs> <laughs> now, you know that the 626 always has some interesting concepts that you probably would struggle to find anywhere else. Yeah. We are at a corgi themed boba shop, but that also serves souffle pancakes that apparently jiggled like corgi butts. Way that thing jiggling, man. Remind me of some corgi boots. <laughs> But guys, literally, there are corgi butt ornaments, you know, decorations, trinkets, everything here. This moves like a corgi butt. You guys, this is the creme brulee souffle pancake. 
Um, previously, you could only get this at Japanese spots, and then you could only get it at Korean spots, and now you can get it at uh, Taiwanese spots. So this is a souffle pancake at Cafe Dark. Right this off the bat, not not very sweet. You know, creme brulee is usually super sweet. Yeah, I would say, guys, that this is a good. This is a little balance. bit a little bit um, fluffy Cantonese like egg pastry cake sander. The mom the wheel likes. cakes. The yeah, wheel the wheel cakes. cakes. No, not the, the wheel. wheel not the wheel cake. Not the wheel cakes. That's a Taiwanese it's wheel like cake. The angel food cake. The angel food cake. The angel food cake. All right, this is this was pretty good though. Honestly, guys, come to Cafe Dur. Bring your corgi. I saw people with dogs outside. Pretty. Well, cute. Bring your date. Bring your dates. Bring your dates. I brought I brought a date. After she saw this wiggling, man, I saw something else wiggling, man. All right, everybody, you know we just came from the Blossom Market, but I gotta show you what Alhambra just got. This is the Jollibee. Yes, the most famous Filipino fast food chain in the entire world is now in Alhambra, right next to the LA Fitness, AKA Esporta over there. So you can go work out, get your chicken, or eat chicken, and then work it all off. Let's go. And by the way, the Jollibee's American headquarters is based in West Covina. That's 626, that's just a few miles away. Hey, look how busy it is here at this Jollibee. That's how you know the area needed it. All right, I got the Chicken Joy, the new spicy. They put the little flag in there. You got the pork rice, jackfruit uh, cake, and then you have your gravy, of course. So I'm gonna go in on this. David, first of all, no sauce. But did you know that the Jollibee group also bought out the world famous Michelin star dim sum Team Ho Wan from Hong Kong. Guys, so glad the Jollibees came to the 626. Do you want to see a Jollibees come to your city? You let us know, and maybe Jollibees will see this video, and maybe they'll think about opening up near you. Have a Jollibee! Hardest working man. What is this? Father. What is this? Author. How's it going, dude? Boba shop owner of two locations. Uh, also, New York Times bestseller. What's about you? All right, no, we got a bala matcha over here. That's guava nectar, milk, and matcha. Lactose-free milk, obviously, of course. Perfect, perfect, <laughs> perfect for me. Hey, sesame. Hey is a play on word with a black, obviously, black sesame. Hey, it's ma. Uh, Nyonai. It's a milk, lactose-free milk. All for you. That's a puree right there. Look up. Doesn't that look? Like, it looks like a ink blot Chinese painting. It looks like an art. Yeah, dude. We have a new. We actually, yeah. The people that have been watching, maybe they know that we're always here, but we actually have a second location opening in Cerritos, Artesia, like right on the border. Uh, on South go, Street? Yeah, on South Street. Uh, it's an awesome like area, a lot of foodie spots there, a lot of great great uh, concepts and businesses. But anyways, opening up end of this month, March. So we'll see you in Artesia. Our third anniversary was this like, past week. We've been here for three years. So I feel like um, just over the years, people have understood us more they actually appreciate that what we what we do for the community here that we're actually like we're about it you know we're, we're not like just here for a quick grab man guava matcha here we go stir it up you see the layers wow that was very refreshing i love the guava the guava hits first and then afterwards the aftertaste you feel the you taste the matcha you know the boba is always great here at bofo mofo very soft very chewy all right let me yeah. try this black mm, sesame right, right quick yeah. Big screen. Tastes just like Tong Yuan. You guys know the black sesame rice balls? It tastes just like it. All right, our next spot is Mellow Mellow Dessert. If you are from the 626, you already know this is the most aesthetic kind of coconut jelly spot in the game. Um, it was started by a Wenzhounese woman in America. This is the first location in San Gabriel. So shout out to the Wenzhounese ladies out there. All right, this is it comes in this jar, glass. So you got a little bit of matcha powder on top. You got a little cream, a little red bean on top. It's jiggly. It is real jiggly. It's kind of really soft. I thought it was a little softer than I thought. It's hot, man. Nope. That is the most decadent, creamiest red bean dessert I maybe I've ever had. Cause you know, red bean is a hit or miss. I would highly recommend it, everybody. Mellow, mellow. All right, you guys, our next concept that is new to the 626, but not new to Southern California, is Irvine's very own All That Shabu. It is a Korean-owned chain, but as you can see, really sort of like caters to the Americanized population. The fob chains from China often open up in Roland or 626, yeah. like San Gabriel first. Not but, that many in OC. Yeah, right, right. But the Asian Americans are starting to like, not necessarily go to like Shaolong Khan or Da Long Yi, <laughs> right? Hey, They're more Yi's coming too. to <laughs> all that Shabu. All right, you guys, okay, okay. Uh, they do clearly have some things that they don't have at the Chinese Shabu, which is the baby octopuses. Oh my God. Yeah, this is, is very Korean right here. Oh shoot, you guys, we got to get some of the dango. 
This is very, very Japanese and Korean right here. All right, you guys, they got some of the uh, Korean barbecue sides right here, some of the panchans. Okay, they got some KFC. All right. When we meet KFC, we're talking about Korean fried chicken, of hey, course. Uh, uh. These are Korean Japanese sauces. I'm just gonna get one full of sesame, one full of perilla with cilantro. That's very unique. Well, is, is this cool to have this many like kind of Asian American shabu spots in the six? Um, I think it's definitely a cool option to have, but personally for me, I prefer both traditional shabu shabu and traditional Chinese hot pot over this particular style. Right, but how's the vibes though? I mean, they're blasting music. No, no, the vibes is here. I mean, they got K-pop booming. I think this is more catered towards the younger crowd. I think if you want taste, I do agree that you know they might want to go with more Chinese style. Uh, as it packs a lot more flavor in their soup bases, and here it's not a bad choice. You know, I feel like it's a little bland. Asian Americans, I feel like sometimes they, I don't want to say fall victim, but fall into that American mindset where the ambiance and the decor matters more than the oh, food. Sure, and it really just depends on what metrics you value and prioritize in your life. Hey, at the end of the day, it's a good thing that, you know, we have that variety where the, you, you want to go Fabi spot or you want to go to an Asian American spot. You know, it's good that, you know, it's more diverse that way. All right, you guys, we had to come back during a time where the line died down a little bit. Um, no, they have a Malona Bar seasonal flavor at Xing Fu Tong, which started in Taiwan. I, I've been to Taiwan. I had Xing Fu Tong in Taiwan. By far the best boba I have ever had in the entire world. But um, for it to come to the 626, it's crazy. Let's get the Malona Bar Boba though. Ching Fu Tong Bros. With a Ching Chu Fong Bros. With a Ching Chu Fong Bros. XT Bros. I got their limited edition Hollow Balo. Hollow Purple. Hollow Purple drink. By the time you guys watch this video, you can't buy this drink anymore, but I'll just let you know how it is. It's pretty good. It's like a flavored soda. This really has a very strong Malona Bar flavor. They partnered directly with Malona to make it happen. So this is not like a knockoff imitation, guys. Don't be a loner. Get Malona. You know, Xing Fu Tong, it came from Taipei, then it landed in Flushing, then it came to Roland Heights, and then it went back to East Village. Even though the Malona one's cool, I'm gonna stick with the OG. I actually like the hollow purple a lot. Our next concept that is brand new to the 626, and I believe America, is called Little Skewer. No, remember there was a time where just having a new skewer spot was like a big deal. Is it possible that the little skewers are better than the big skewers? I'll tell you this, it looks like there are some party fobs that agree with that statement. Find out. We are at Little Skewer. The owner is from Dongbei. And I'll tell you this, Dongbei people, they know how to bring a very interesting, fun party Chinese vibe. I had no idea that this place would look like this stepping in here, man. Basically, everything here is a tiny portion on a tiny skewer. That's right. All right, you guys, we are at Little Skewer, AKA uh, Xiao Jiu Dian, and we have ordered a bunch of Xiao Chuar. This means that these are like micro skewers. It's almost like the slider of burgers, but to skewers. Now, what you going for, man? For me, this looks the most whimsical. One straight section of corn. That is crazy, man. Who had the time to do that? Xiao Chuar. I think the concept behind Little Twars, and actually nobody told me this, is it just feels like more fun for less money. Yeah. With the bigger skewers, sometimes you gotta like give it half half. Like here's half for you, half for me. This one, no sharing needed. How is you gonna eat four skewers at the same time? Now, I know you play pro ball in Asia and you guys went to uh, Liaoning one time, We right? did go to Liaoning and we ate a bunch of these, man. This uh, brings back a lot of good memories when I was out in Asia. Don't hurt yourself, dude. Don't hurt yourself. I did it. You guys know about Dongbei culture. Um, it's mixed with a lot of like Manchurian culture as well, which was like a nomadic group, very similar to Mongolians. And I think that that's why you have such like hearty, you know, warrior food like the Chuars. Think about just going in the war in the middle of the night, blizzard cold, you start a fire, have some Chuars, man. Yeah, and just chill with your homies, probably the rest of your like crazy soldier types. I mean, that's drink what people beer, are doing right drink now. Drink beer and just like, hey, thinking back in the day, man, they probably just chopped up some boar and yeah. just cook it on the hey, fire. Yo, history repeats itself, guys. 